Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Mac Merlin stream. I see quite a few people online tonight. I see a 2 1 Comrade Questions, Graphic, Hello Man Liz, and Digital FXXX, and also Brain Juice. Thanks, guys, for joining in so early. As you can see from the stream title down below, tonight we are building the Hope 75S. Um, during my unboxing stream, I actually said that it reminded me so much of a Jelly Epic and I was like, okay, it seems like a cheaper version of the Jelly Epic in terms of quality control, the overall feel, like the overall vibe, right? So here, let's just review the group buy really quick. So this, this board is actually already in group buy. Um, depending on where you go, like if you look at my build stream right now or my build command right now, you'll see I've got two links on that. One is the Geek Hack page, which is, which is what you're looking at, looking at right now. And the second one is from Desk Hero. Desk Hero is actually both the US and Canadian vendor for this board. Yeah, uh, retail prices go anywhere from 359 for the aluminum variant. And if you want that PVD brass weight, you are looking at 450 bucks. There are two variants of this board. There's the X for exploded and S for standard. Today we are building the S. Velocifier wasn't too happy with what I said last Thursday because they didn't like it. They were so unhappy that they actually called me out on it. We disagree with Mech Merlin review, but in order to make sure there is full transparency with our products, we will keep this review here. Ultimately, we want our consumers to feel com comfortable with their decision to buy or not buy. Keep in mind, what I said on Thursday was all first impressions of an unboxing stream, right? Like I said earlier, after I've built this, my tune might change. You know, my tune might change for the better or heaven forbid for the worse. But yeah, let's see. Let's see how things go today. The Hope 75 comes with P-Foam the foam that the community rants and raves about, and EVA foam, right? So you get to choose which one you would like to have me build it with. The EVA foam is actually very similar to the PE foam. I would say it's like the difference is rather than having the low mids and the high mids amplified, this still amplifies it, but not to the same extent. So I guess for in like layman's term, Sound like a jelly. Sound kind of like a jelly, you know? So here, let me open this poll up for for two minutes and you guys get to decide. Let's see, EVA foam, one at 13 votes, 68%. All right, so here we go. We'll stick with that. The second thing is, shall we have Poron plate foam or not? So here, let's, let's go see how this one turns out. <laughs> Far on plate foam or no plate foam? Well, truth be told, this board is designed to make use of the foams. So yeah. The masses like the foam, because if you don't put foam, will you experience FOMO? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's an even split. <laughs> an even split half the people want plate foam and half the people want no plate foam <laughs> what am i supposed to do with this <laughs> no i guess if it's an even split then that means i get to decide i'm gonna say uh gosh let's do no plate foam oh one thing to note one thing i just checked out was during the unboxing, I kept thinking that this was like a really thin PCB. And I was like, no, 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 it's not a thin PCB. It just feels that way because of all the flex cuts. Look at all that. So I decided to measure it today and it's about like 1.1 millimeters. The standard PCB width or the standard PCB thickness is like 1.5, 1.6. So this is significantly thinner, which makes sense why they included these shims right here, stab washers. So we'll be using these while we put on our stabilizers. There may be openings for the stabilizers, but there's nothing for the wire. So you actually do have to put the, the, the PCB foam on first before you can put on the stabilizers.
I'm just gonna go with no plate foam. So all of these are lubed with 205G0. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do the corner first. The first couple switches are always the most difficult. All right, we got all the switches in place. Check it out. Okay, that's the bottom half. So we still need to thread those ribbon cables through. Yeah, based on the build guide, what they recommend is attaching them to, to both points first and then threading them through these two holes and then attaching it to the daughter board rather than keeping it on the daughter board. Do I have this upside down? Nope, I don't. That's where it is. This is supposed to go in the case. They, they don't have the cutouts correct for where the holes are. You guys see what I'm talking about here? The two holes which the ribbon cable is supposed to go through are covered up. So, you know, big deal, right? Big deal. It's a, it's a ribbon cable. Let me show you guys those ribbon cables right there. Look, that's one ribbon cable on the PVD brass weight. We just have to take it out Thing with ribbon cables is sometimes there's that big question is it blue up or blue down so yeah put them in backwards on accident without damage that really depends on the board Hey Merlin, bit off topic, but how do I feel about the 4B? Um, I like it. It's definitely one of my thockier boards. There we go. Okay. Got it out like that. Okay. And connect the light first, actually. That's how they do it. Connect the light first. go that's in just curious with having been in the hobby for a long time have you ever thought of designing a keyboard or have designed one i have learned some basic pcb design but you know like the interest is there but the motivation is not motivation in time pretty much How annoying are those are those um, ribbon cables they're annoying but it's not like they're not doable right like you guys just watched me do it like would I prefer to not have to deal with them absolutely but it's absolutely doable you know it's I'd say it's kind of like soldering right finally able to make it to a Tuesday stream welcome Welcome to the Tuesday night build streams. It's really pretty. Yeah, I know. Very pretty indeed. Let's take to align it properly. Yeah, I've already put all the gaskets on. As I said earlier, I put gaskets on the case itself, itself instead of the plate because it's easier to get another plate versus getting another top and bottom half. That blue looks so good. We we'll love an Emery or LW75 in that color. Me too. Me too. Does it have a metallic look or does it, or it's just a reflection? It is just the reflection. Uh, 
having trouble aligning the top here. Okay, got one side on, the other side just won't seem to snap in place. What? What is preventing it? I don't know. Okay, now that I'm looking at it, I think I know. I experienced the same thing with the Neong. I didn't think it would happen with these switches, but I think that's what's happening. There we go, got it. <laughs> so what's happening is that the um, edges of these switches is blocking where the plate screw is supposed to go into. So basically it was resting on top of the switch. That's what's happening. So you have to remove these guys. <laughs> All right, it's definitely resting on top of it, so that sucks. They did mention it in, inside the build guide, but I wasn't, like, I didn't think it would happen with these switches. Yeah, I can't properly clip them in right here. Let me find an alternative switch. That might be smaller. Try some Duroc Palms. Yeah, no, it's actually... I don't see how any switch could fit. Let's try some Alpacas. Yep. Um... I don't see how any switch can fit. So where the screw goes in there, that's sitting maybe like half a millimeter higher than, than the plate. So the switch can't actually clip in. So the issue isn't the plate, it's the width of the screw, right? You would need to shave off that screw in, in, in order for the, for the switch to, to like completely fit in. Let's put the weight on. It's gonna be a little bit harder to do here. Okay, we got it in. Now we gotta be extra careful with this. I got two screws in. Why don't they use JST? That's a very good question. Why don't they? There we go. Whew. Okay, we got it. But keep in mind, once you have it built, you don't have to worry about it anymore, right? It's just part of the build. Like, I'm sure there are people who rebuild their board several times over, but once you finish the build, you're good. Around the arrow cluster, yes. There. These four positions, one, two, three, four, they are not fully seated in. Because one side, the bottom right for so the so the bottom right on this one is rested on the screw. Top right is rested on the screw. Um, bottom right, bottom left. It's not very secure, to be honest. The moment of truth. Well, these keys, the ones that were problematic, show up. Yep, it's working. Okay, good. It's working. Yep, these two work. Okay, that's good. How about these two? Actually, I can't tell because 
Those, those are probably page up, page down. Okay, good. They both work. Okay, so basically we got right into the socket just enough, even though one side is, is like up. Whew. <laughs> I was really afraid that if it didn't, that means I'd have to take apart the whole thing again and play around with um, the, the stupid ribbon cables. But so far, so good. So far, so good. It's like right now, if you look very closely, you'll see that one side of the switch is clipped in and the other side is not. So I'm expecting my keycaps will be a little bit slanted. <laughs> so here, let's let's go put the keycaps on. Let's put keycaps on. So I got a little package from Zentclack recently. And he said these are keycaps. I'm suspecting they are their um, Chinese sub legended keycap, the Tsang Jia ones. So that will be a black on white set. We'll put a black and white set on this. Black and white typically looks good on a blue board. Yeah, let's go take a look at it. Ooh, very nice. He even sent me the desk mat. Very pretty. Cool, cool. And how sweet of him sending me some tea. Some zested tea, jasmine tea, and black tea. Mellow, aromatic, and soothing from Leafia Tea. Very nice. Thank you very much, Zenclack. Zenclack is actually one of my um, sponsors on this channel. So check them out and use discount code WIZARD to get 5% off. The oolong switches are pretty good. I'm in fact putting those oolong switches on my Vega once we get around to building it. There we go. That is the that is not the kit that I'll need quite yet. There we go. That's what I wanted. So this is a very interesting set because instead of having like the Roman Latin stuff as your main legend, it's actually a sub legend. We'll start off with this one. I think it'll be a good match. Yep. Should look like a good match. Arrow keys are right here. There we go. Okay. Let's see if the arrow keys work. Okay, it's not bad, guys. It's not bad. It's it's pretty consistent. Like if you look super carefully, that's when you can tell that the keycap isn't on straight, but you but you have to know what to look for. Plus like having it being high profile helps out a lot, but I, I think this is fine. I can tell, and at my angle right here, I can see that this switch is lifted up to the top, uh, to, to the bottom right, and this switch is lifted up on the bottom left. I can see that from my angle, but that's only because I know what to look for. See, the right arrow is bugging me out more than anything. It looks like a big gap between the top and the frame. Yeah, I see that. Knowing that it's not straight still would annoy me. Shh. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's put on the rest. Let's put on the rest of these keycaps. This board would look good with Shoko. Yeah, I think it would too. There, 
Is that the right profile? That is not the right profile. Okay, earlier someone was asking if the switches would be easy to pull out. Yup, they would be easy to pull out, especially those switches that are resting on that screw receptacle. <laughs> okay, that answers that question. Okay, and just to make sure that that easy to, to remove nature is only on that, let's try and remove a switch that isn't impacted. Yup. It's only on those switches. Oh. <laughs> okay. There there goes my feet. There goes my feet. <laughs> Just brushed on it slightly. It came off. Can you guys tell anything wrong with these two switches? Do they look weird to you? Because they don't look good. What? What? Why did it just fall off like that? They said feet will be stronger in final production. They know the feet are weak. Okay. Yeah, like literally one just fell off. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to take off the remaining feet because it's just going to annoy the hell out of me. All right, we'll do a quick typing test. Do a quick typing test. But here, this is... The Velocifier Hope 75S, S for standard. And it's actually pretty much very close to the same layout as the Jelly that I have right here. Similar blocker here and here. Um, this has the F13 symmetrical layout that a lot of people like. The Jelly does not. Looks great. Yeah, I know. The board looks fantastic, actually. Like, they're, like the color of blue... Their um, brass weight, just like like the board just looks great. Internally though, that's where most of the issues are. <laughs> that glow is really nice. I like that. Yeah, I know, and that's even with the with the poron gasket around it. This is the first time I'm typing on this board. Doesn't sound overly marbly. I believe that's because of the EVA foam. If we had gone for the P foam, it would have sounded more jelly-like. Can I type on the jelly? Yep. Same plate, same switches, but with different... Um, it's a P foam versus EVA foam and using Whale PBT versus Geek Arc keycaps. There we go. Let's see. Based on my quick 100 word typing test, I'm going to say that I actually like the typing feel of this a whole lot better than the jelly. Like the jelly feels great. Jelly feels and sounds great. But this, I think because of the added flex, it just makes it a very enjoyable typing experience to me. In terms of sound, um, I'm gonna say I still prefer the Jelly over it. Like this is still a good sound. 
it's definitely more muted than the jelly. Like the jelly makes it more, you no, know, for, for lack of a better word, the jelly sounds clackier. Now, with that said, my jelly doesn't actually have case foam either. So that probably plays a factor in it as well. Do you think the EVA muted it more or just the overall shape? Based on my understanding of EVA, EVA kind of just rounds out the tone, whereas PE tends to amplify like the like the mid-range a bit more. Like this one amplifies it too, but not to the same extent as this. It's actually what I expected it to sound like, to be honest with you guys, which is why I'm I'm not disappointed at all. This actually met my um, expectations. I'm gonna say that I really like the type me feel on it. Yeah, so sound, I still prefer the jelly. Feel, I prefer the Hope 75. Um, looks wise, looks wise, hard to say. Both boards look exceptional. I'm gonna say that I probably prefer the blue of the Hope more than I like the greenish white of the jelly. I like it. Mr. Salty says, I don't like the light glows around the blocker. That's even got like the Poron um, light blocker as well. So without that Poron blocker, it would have been a lot worse. That, that just looks gorgeous right there. Like now that I'm looking at it more, um, the fact that these guys are kind of not completely flush, it seems to make the gap between the down arrow and the right arrow more, more apparent, right? So that's actually annoying me right now. <laughs> Velocifier did send me the via file, so let's let's go try it out. There we go. Once you load the via JSON file, it gets automatically detected. Hope seventy five S. Let's see. Can I control the lighting on this? Um, solid color, let's do breathing. Okay, so that's a breathing blue right there. Let's try rainbow. Rainbow, there we go. Rainbow. What's mm, another one, snake. Will snake do it. So yeah, it looks like this is both lights are RGB underglow. Oh, look at that. That's that's pretty neat. I like that. But yeah, let's see. Um, I do have a few things to say about the board. Let's start off with what I said on Thursday. On Thursday, I said that it felt like a copy of the jelly. Like a cheaper copy. Like everything seemed like it, it, it just wasn't up to par. Like... Like... Like the one thing that really got me was the plastic on the brass seemed like it was tape instead of like the peel away plastic. The um, case itself wasn't well packaged. The case looked cheap. Just um, the usage of a ribbon cable instead of instead of a JST. I'd, I'd argue that's kind of like a custom keyboard standard at this point. It only comes into play when you're building the board, but once you've built the board and you've built it correctly, then you don't have to worry about it. It's mainly a a builder issue rather than a board issue, I'd say. Basically like little things here and there. And then now during like the build stream, some of the things that I really got frustrated with. So what you have to do is once you put it together, remove your left and down and your page up and page down that will allow you to, to screw the top case in. So once you've screwed it in, then you can put those switches. But the switch, like the bottom right and, or like the bottom left, will end up resting on the screw receptacle, right? So this is why you get a, like a slight incline on these two and on these two. The RGB makes the page down button noticeable more. Oh yes, definitely. The page up, page down is more obvious. I I agree with you on that. Page up, page down is more obvious than these two. Leans to the left more than the home. Okay. Another thing that I don't like are the magnetic feet. Now apparently the production unit will have stronger magnets, but in the course of this build, after putting on the feet, they have dropped off with the uh, moving 
and there was one particular instance where I was just holding the board up and the foot just fell right off. So I was like, uh, okay. So all the typing tests that you've heard up till now were done without feet. I would have just preferred regular rubber feet that would stick on, right? Like, I don't need this magnetic solution. Yeah, those are the issues with it. Let's talk about some of the good stuff. Um, number one, I really like how this board feels. I, I was a little bit skeptical about having so many um, flex cuts in the PCB, having a really thin PCB. It was like 1.1 millimeters to my, to my measurements. The PC plate was, was flexible because it also had flex cuts. And, and I was like, maybe that's a little too much flex for me. And on top of it, it's a gasket. So I was like, not sure how I would feel. But after typing on it, this, this actually feels very comfortable to me. I was really glad that the audience picked EVA foam instead of PE, just because PE is such an overhyped, overplayed sound profile. So I didn't, really didn't want this to sound like the jelly, <laughs> right? I do like the sound that PE foam makes. So in terms of sound, I still prefer the jelly. I've said it so many times already, but the blue on this is probably one of my favorite blues that I've ever seen on any board on our hobby. So I think Mr. Salty was talking about it earlier that it looked like it was Cerakote. So where does this sit in the 75% tier list? So for me, it still feels like a cheaper, maybe less quality version of the Jelly Epic. But keep in mind, this one actually retails for more than the Jelly. Just because it's a cheaper version, less quality of a jelly doesn't make it any less good. Like I'll probably be typing on him more than my jelly, to be honest with you guys. Like the jelly definitely has the sound. I do prioritize feel over sound. So you'll probably see this on my desk a lot more often. I also like that it's the F13 symmetrical top row. I feel like they tried to do a lot of the things that the jelly got right. And they tried to improve on it a little bit more, like, like the seamless design. Like someone earlier was like asking if this was a premium, if this was a premium board. I'm gonna say that missing something like this takes it out of the running for the word premium. This is like a design flaw. Like the jelly, you can agree or disagree with how they've implemented stuff. But this is quite literally a, a flaw. Okay, now that I'm doing this, I can actually feel a difference. When I'm doing this, it feels really stiff on the side that it's resting on that screw. Yeah, I can feel that. TLDR, I think it's a fine board. Is it a premium board? No, but it's definitely a fine board. Um, with that being said, as only being a fine board at 359 to 449, I'm gonna say it's a bit overpriced at the high end. 359, 359 for this, maybe a tad expensive. Like maybe if it was 340, I'd be okay, but 360, uh you know, maybe a little too expensive, but overall it's a fine board, but this board de definitely has the looks. Really love how it looks, but looks are not enough to make a board premium to me. All right, guys, thanks. Thanks for watching. I know this went a little longer than, than expected, but yeah, thanks guys for joining in. My next stream will be this coming Thursday. I'll be unboxing a few things. I don't know exactly what they are yet because there are certain packages racing their way to me. So we'll see what shows up on Thursday and that's what we will unbox. Yeah, thanks guys for joining in. I'll see you next time. Goodbye everyone.